Lady number 8671. Pedestrian street lights. We have four bids. Meyer Electric Company, Inc. M-E-Y-E-R. Electric Company, Inc. 287000 one hundred forty four dollars two eight seven one four four point zero zero Reinhold Electric Inc. R E I N H O L D Three hundred thousand nine hundred twenty nine dollars three zero zero nine two nine point zero zero T G B Inc T period G period B period Inc two hundred forty four thousand Two hundred fifty dollars two four four two five zero point zero zero Gerstner Electric Inc. G E R S T N E R Electric Inc. Two hundred ninety nine thousand eight hundred eighty four dollars. Two two nine eight eight four point zero zero. With the low bidder, please meet with Miss Bryant in the hallway. Thank you. Hearing number 8196. We only have one here for the 87. Portress is not here. 96 is not here. Got it. Got it. Got it. That's right. Hearing number 8196, a conditional use revocation hearing regarding 5400 Partridge. During the hearing today, your testimony is being recorded. If you come forward to testify, please state your name and address and be sworn in. As you testify, please direct your comments to the board and not to those in the audience. Members of the audience are asked to remain silent and not coach the witnesses. During your testimony, members of this board may have questions for you. Following the hearings today, the board will proceed with its regular agenda. Following the conclusion of the agenda, the board will deliberate and vote on the hearings. The board will notify the permit holders of its decision by mail. Hearing number 8196 which hearing began on April 18, 2017, is set now on June 26, 2018, after the matter had been tabled to allow the conditional use permit violations to be addressed. It is being conducted pursuant to Section 26.100.030 of the Revised Code of the City of St. Louis. The purpose of the hearing is to determine whether the conditional use permit issued to Shark and Delhi, CO Abed Ahmed, to occupy 5400 Partridge 
as a convenience store and carry out restaurant, no liquor or cooking, subject to certain conditions, should be revoked. The conditional use permit is numbered as 122542. In a warning letter dated December 23, 2016, to Shark and Deli, CO Abed Ahmed, violation of conditions 4, 5, 6, 9, and 11 of the conditional permit use numbered 122542 were listed. On April 18, 2017, the following two conditions numbered 5 and 6 were still in violation. Those conditions read as follows. Number five, there shall be no sale of items that can be used or intended for use as drug paraphernalia as defined in Ordinance 68404 or its successor ordinances, including but not limited to food scales, glass tubes, disposable lighters with pop-off tops, steel scrubbing pads and screens, rolling papers, ephedrine or pseudoephedrine, diet supplements, sleep aids, bath salts, or other substitutes for illegal drugs. In addition, there should be no sale of cigars or cigarillos commonly used or adapted for the use involving a controlled substance, examples of which include but are not limited to the following. Phillies, Dutch Masters, White Owl, Swisher Sweets, Splitterillos, Backwoods, Optimo and Garcia, and Vega, and Game. Item 6. There should be no loitering for which the applicant must post a no loitering sign and enforce it. The Board of Public Service has in its possession the following documents, which are being introduced into evidence today. Item 1. A certified copy of Section 26.100.030 of the Zoning Code of the City of St. Louis. Item 2. The conditional use permit numbered as 122542 issued to Shark and Deli CO Abed Ahmed to occupy 5400 Partridge as a convenience store and carry out restaurant store, no liquor or cooking, subject to certain conditions. Item 3, a letter dated December 23, 2016, sent to Shark and Deli CO Abed Ahmed from Zoning Inspector warning of the violations of the conditions numbered 4, 5, 6, 9, and 11 that were found upon a recent site inspection and the potential for a revocation hearing should the violations not be corrected within 30 days of the date of the letter. Item 4, a memorandum from the Zoning Inspector to the Zoning Administrator dated April 18, 2017, finding conditions numbered 5 and 9 of the conditional use permit still in violation. A memorandum from the Zoning Inspector to the Zoning Administrator dated August 1, 2017, finding condition number five in violation in a memorandum from the zoning inspector to the zoning administrator stating that upon her in investigation performed on January 31st, 2017, the zoning inspector still found violation of conditions numbers five, six, and nine of the conditional use permit. Item five, public notices for today's hearing. And item six, a certified letter dated May 29th, 2018 to Shark and Deli CEO Abed Ahmed from the board secretary providing notice of today's hearing. The Office of the Zoning Administrator has the burden to prove the conditional use permit conditions have not been complied with. After all evidence of the Zoning Administrator has been presented to the board, the board will ask for additional testimony, if any, in support of the revocation. Then the conditional use holder will be given an opportunity to present evidence. Lastly, the board will hear other testimony in opposition to the revocation, if any. At this time, the board asks the representative of the zone, Office of the Zoning Administrator to please come forward and be sworn <coughs> in. I do. My name is Myra Turner. I'm Zoning Inspector for the City of St. Louis, Room 400. Can you please tell us about your investigations? My investigation as of today. Number five was still in violation. He still had cigars. He uh, stated that he had um, was trying to get on the Board of Adjustment to ask for this condition to be amended to prepackaged only cigars. And number 11, 
was in violation, which I was kind of leaning on number 11 because of the fact it did say all windows, doors must not have boards, mesh, grates, materials, or covering of any kind, and that the windows could have proper blinds or on the inside. And he does have grates on the windows and on the door. However, if you were to be in the neighborhood in which this sits, you would understand why, because he probably wouldn't have anything in his store if he did. I do understand that it is a violation. I do understand that I had to put it as a violation. But I'm also letting this board know that where that particular business sits, if he does not do something to secure his wares, he won't have any. So just to be clear, still in violation of condition number five and condition number 11, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So on condition number five, my question would be, as you mentioned that um, the applicant is trying to get onto the schedule for the Board of Adjustment to have this condition amended. amended. And so is it reasonable to believe that in the amount of time that we have given him that he should have been able to get on that? Or is there a waiting list for that? I am not familiar with that. I am not really sure because I don't handle the Board of Adjustment. So I'm not sure. Okay. So it could very well be that it's still waiting to get on the Board of Adjustment and amend the condition. It's a possibility, but I'm not really 100% sure. Okay. Any questions from the board for the zoning administrator, inspector? Um, Ms. Turner, was item number six, the no loitering sign and no loitering enforcement, was that cleared up? Yes. Okay. okay. Other questions from the board? Thank you very much. At this time, the board asks the representative of the Department of Health to please come forward and testify. I do. Adam Wario. Uh, actually, uh, our record ind indicates uh, the facility uh, mentioned on the hearing doesn't have uh, food permit which has the department so uh, they reported at the facility out of business which is at uh, uh, the food section part in April 24 2000 so until then we don't have any record for that uh, facility right. any questions from the board for the inspector from the health department thank you very much if there's anyone else present who wishes to testify in support of this revocation, please come forward and be sworn in. Seeing none, the board asks the conditional use permit holder to please come forward and be sworn in. No. They're not. No. no. Okay. Let the record reflect that the conditional use permit holder is not present at today's hearing. If there's anyone else present opposing this rev revocation, please come forward and testify. Okay. No one's present. So at this time, I would like to introduce the zoning inspector's report into the record as evidence. Item A. Mm -hmm. Matter concerning hearing number 8196 is now closed and submitted. We will now handle hearing number 8215. Hearing number 8215 is being conducted pursuant to section 26.100.030 of the revised code of the city of St. Louis. The purpose of the hearing is to determine whether the conditional use permit issued to Compton Speedy Gas, CEO Jamal Alkari, to occupy 3750 South Compton as a gas station and convenience store, no liquor and no cooking, subject to certain conditions, should be revoked. The conditional use permit is numbered as 119470. The condition in question are as follows. Condition 4. All signage must be applied for and approved by the Office of the Zoning Administrator. No pennants, bulbs, moving signs, or temporary signs. Windows must be kept clear of clutter with only permitted area of the window covered by signs in accordance with city ordinances. 
condition eight. No loitering signs will be placed prominently on the building and will be enforced by the management. Two of the following signs will be placed prominently, one on the front of the building and at the front door and one on the gas pumps facing Compton. Enforced by management to read, quote, quiet, respect our neighbors, no loud music, no begging, no stealing, no loitering, no trespassing, no littering. Violators will be prosecuted, end quote. Two of the following signs will be placed prominently, one facing Compton and one facing Chippewa. Quote, video surveillance area, end quote. The following signs will be placed at each gas pump, gasoline pump and enforced by the management. Quote, cashier will turn off pump if noise is loud, end quote. And condition 11. Trash receptacles will be placed at the entrance to the building and each of the exit entrance ramps of the premise and emptied routinely to avoid overflowing. The Office of the Zoning Administrator has the burden to prove the conditional use permit conditions have not been complied with. After all evidence, the Zoning Administrator has been presented. The Board will ask for additional testimony, if any, in support of the revocation. Then, the conditional use holder will be given the opportunity to present evidence. Lastly, the Board will hear other testimony in opposition to the revocation, if any. <coughs> Your testimony is being recorded. When you come forward, please state your name and address and be sworn in. As you testify, please direct your comments to the board and not to those in the audience. Members of the audience are asked to remain silent and not coach the witnesses. During your testimony, members of this board may have questions for you. Following the hearing, the board will proceed with its regular agenda. Following the conclusion of the regular agenda, the board will deliberate, discuss, and vote on the hearing. The board will notify the conditional use holder of its decision by mail in about two weeks. The Board of Public Service has in its possession the following documents, which are being introduced into evidence. Item 1, a certified copy of the Zoning Code of the City of St. Louis. Item 2, the conditional use permit numbered as 119470, issued to Compton Speedy Gas, CO Jamal Alkari, to occupy 3750 South Compton, as a gas station and convenience store, no liquor and no cooking, subject to certain conditions. Item 3, a letter dated January 3rd, 2018, sent to Compton Speedy Gas, CO Jamal Alkari, and CO Samer LLC, from the zoning inspector warning of the violations of the conditions that were found upon a recent site inspection and the potential for a revocation hearing should the violations not be corrected within 30 days of the date of the letter. Item 4, a memorandum dated February 8, 2018 from the Zoning Inspector to the Zoning Administrator stating that upon the date, the Zoning Inspector found violations of conditions numbers 4, 8, and 11 of the conditional use permit. This memo includes photographs and violations. Item 5, public notices for today's hearing. And item 6, a certified letter dated May 25, 2018 sent to Compton Speedy Gas, CO, Jamal Alkari from the board secretary providing notice of the hearing, which was tabled until today's date. The board asks the representative of the Office of the Zoning Administrator to please come forward at this time and be sworn in. I do. My name is Myra Turner. I'm zoning inspector for the city of St. Louis. Can you tell us about your investigations, please? Mm -hmm. Okay. Violation for number three. No vending or ATM machines on the exterior of the premises. No outside sales, including no sales by window to the outside. Distribution or cooking and no outside storage, including ice machines, except that there may be a air pump that is turned off during business non-operating hours. Today, there was an ice machine on the front of the building. Number four, all signage. Well, still had some temporary signage in the windows. Okay, number eight, the no loitering signs and where they should be placed. There is only one no loitering sign and it's placed on the front of the building. There is no sign facing... Compton. The quiet respect our neighbors. No loud music and, uh, you know, should be placed. Not there. Um, the video surveillance area. 
There is a sign on the, for the vi a sign for the video surveillance area, and it's facing uh, the Chippewa. Uh, the following signs will be placed at each gasoline pump. Cashier will turn pump off if noise is loud. They're not there. Uh, no wrapping papers. Number nine, cigars, blunts. That are, they have shelves of wrapping paper and shelves of cigars. Number 11, trash receptacles will be placed in the entrance build of the building and uh, at the entrance and exit ramps. They do have a trash, trash receptacle at the front of the building, but they're not at the entrance and exit ramps. Okay. And so, again, just to be uh, completely clear, violation of condition 3, 4, 8, 9, and 11. Correct. Okay. Questions from the board for the zoning inspector? Was item number three just the ice machine outside? Was that it? Yes. Okay, I'm just clarifying. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. The board asked the representative, the inspector from the Department of Health, please come forward and testify. <clears throat> Adam Mario. Uh, we, uh, we recall that uh, we testified about this facility in uh, March 20th, uh, 2018. And uh, since then, s since the establishment is the lowest complexity, since then we only made uh, one inspection. Uh, the inspection reveals uh, the general maintenance of and cleanness of uh, the building, and uh, we only found uh, non-critical violations, like uh, the floors were not clean, and uh, there were dust in the building, and uh, this is what we found. Actually, when we look at, it's not in our jurisdiction to look at that, but uh, the repair of the building was reported as a general uh, good retail practices and uh, the report indicates that the building, uh, the facility is in a poor, poor repair, except that we have not found any critical violation which may cause imminent uh, health hazard to public. Okay. Questions from the board for the health inspector. Thank you very much. If there's anyone else present who wishes to testify that the noted conditions have not been complied with, please come forward and be sworn in. Nothing but the truth, so help you yes, I do. Would you state your name for the board, please? Yes, my name is Kara Spencer, and I am the alderman of the 20th Ward, which includes this property here. So uh, you may remember I came before this board to testify back in March. That was three months ago when we first heard the issues here at the Speedy Gas. At that time, I explained to the board that we were expecting new ownership of both the building and the business. Uh, we did actually transfer, the, the uh, property was transferred. Uh, the property is now owned by a new entity, as is the business. It was my uh, understanding, as I explained to the board, that at the time of the transference, it, I understood that the building would be closed down, that the business would stop existing and functioning in the way that it was functioning. And it was explained to me by the prospective buyers that they were going to demolish the building and build a new facility, a much improved facility, that they would again serve the community by selling gas, as its name implies, and that they would function at a much higher level than they are currently functioning. While the business and the building did change hands, the business is operating almost exactly as it was before. We've had several months to get in compliance. We are not in compliance. 
the uh, building did not cease to exist as current as it, as it was before and this is a major source of frustration to the community as you know as I explained three months ago we've had several issues of drug sales loitering uh, we've had crimes we had a homicide that originated at this location just a few months ago uh, there's a lot of alarming activity going on here and we are frankly very disappointed that what we expected the building to shut down be renovated and open again within a year uh, did not happen. That being said, we do have new owners. Uh, and what I would respectively like to request is an extension here. Uh, I am going to also mention I spoke to our neighborhood stabilization officer, who plays a very vital role here. Um, she did explain that there have been some improvements to the building and to the operation here. But even still, I continue to have concerns. And so for that purpose and for that reason, I am respectfully requesting that the board consider adding again an additional um, time frame to get the new owners up to speed and get the business either to stop functioning and do as what was originally planned and promised to the community, and that is demolish the building and improve it, uh, or at least get in full compliance of um, other conditions. So your recommendation as the alderman to the board would be is to give the owner an opportunity to get in compliance to work with you and neighborhood association, whatever needs to happen to take care of these issues and um, do a better job with the neighborhood. That's right. And while leaving on the table the revocation, and I hate to continue this on. Uh, as you may remember, we had the first hearing in March. We did ask for an extension at that time, expecting a new owner. Uh, there was some mishap in timing, which prevented another hearing last month. Um, and given what I consider extenuating circumstances here, I am, I am going to request uh, an additional time allotment while keeping the revocation open. Questions for Alderwoman Spencer from the board? Yes, please. Uh, Alderwoman, uh, the uh, violations appear to be relatively minor and easily corrected. And so I suspect that uh, it's relatively easy to take the ice machine and, and put it inside and, uh, and to address the laudering signs and things that, that appear to be relatively minor. So should these um, conditions be met, then... Uh, any matter before this board, therefore, would be moot. And so we would not be able to, to uh, uh, hold this matter uh, beyond uh, uh, um, these corrective actions in order to allow uh, the building to be raised and another building to be erected. I mean, would you agree with that? It doesn't seem that we would have that authority. Well, I do agree with that. It is surprising considering that, as you point out, that the conditions in correcting those are uh, relatively minor, that they haven't yet been accomplished. Um, that being said, I do believe that one of the conditions is to not be on the nuisance list, if I remember correctly. Is that, is that a condition that you have before you? I, I don't have the list of conditions, unfortunately, before me at this time. But um, considering that they continue to reside on that list of nuisance properties, we continue to see a high volume of calls for service at this location due to the activity there. Uh, I think that would remain a concern and hopefully would be considered by this board to be a reason to re revoke um, their a conditional use permit so if that were uh, something that the community wished to see continue I did uh, discuss this property and the business at our last business associate or excuse me at our last neighborhood association meeting which happened just last week the neighborhood expressed outrage that they were continuing to operate and it is a continual concern well I, I certainly would agree it seems to me that if we're going to to sustain the um, the revocation that it would occur today if we give an extension and if uh, the um, uh, uh, conditions are corrected, it seems to me that we would thereafter lose any, any jurisdiction that we would have. Um, in full disclosure, I, I, I have only driven around the property myself. I've seen activity that is not becoming of the neighborhood. I've not gone inside. Our neighborhood stabilization officer, who's also a city employee, who's charged with um, kind of reviewing some of these things, uh, and I generally respect uh, that office and the folks who hold those positions. And 
in light of that, am deferring to her estimation that they are working to improve. Um, without her uh, having stated that, I would not be in support of continuing this. Um, so I, with that, I will leave the decision to the board. Other questions for Alderman Woman Spencer? and it might um, best be directed elsewhere, but um, the ordinance requires a notice to go to the owner of the building and also to the holder of the permit. Is, ha, are, have these people changed, and is the city aware of the names of those people? It's my understanding that the change of ownership has not taken place, which is uh, also an issue of concern. Uh, whenever you have a business that changes hands, and the uh, new occupancy permit, for example, needs to be issued. And I, I'm not sure, I'm not aware that that has occurred uh, or if it has occurred, but it's certainly a question that needs to be answered. Any other perhaps, questions? Perhaps the, the business owner could speak to that. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. We'll get to them in just a second. Sure. Real quick. Any other questions for Alderman Woman Spencer? Yes, yeah, just for, for clarity. I mean, I, I think that. Uh, when the citizens are asked or, or been given an opportunity to make corrections, and uh, we uh, extended this back in March uh, uh, to, uh, to make these corrections, and they've not been corrected. I mean, I, I think that uh, either uh, um, they haven't taken our request very seriously, or they've ignored the request to, to, to make these corrections. These are not very expensive uh, 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 corrections. Uh, uh, it doesn't take a lot of money to do what we've asked them to do here. And, and uh, while I am not normally punitive, I do expect people to be compliant. Um, and uh, yet I hear you saying we ought to maybe give them another two weeks or 30 days or whatever uh, to comply. Um, just want to make sure you're asking that. Judge, um, I really re have a, a tremendous amount of respect for that perspective, especially as the director of public safety for our entire city. It, my perspective is to defer to um, someone who serves and serves for you, but certainly um, in, a, in a different capacity. Um, and with the NSO, the Neighborhood uh, Stabilization Officer, serving in that capacity that is the that is the reason for my uh, request for an extension without which i would not be uh, advocating for that there is a large amount of frustration on my part and the part of the community with the continual operation um, of the business um, and um, i'm here to stand with the folks that work um, on the ground level with me but also understand uh, that your perspective is one that i can't that is has a lot of validity. We are very frustrated, and we do expect that our businesses are compliant with those, um, with the conditions that we put on them, and that they respect the community that they serve. Any other questions for the old woman? Thank you. If there's anyone else present who wishes to testify that the noted conditions have not been complied with, please come forward and be sworn in. Seeing none. The board asks the conditional use permit holder to please come forward and be sworn in. Yes. Gassan Jaraba. Yeah, I'm the new owner of uh, 3750 South Campton. We just take over at, at the end of last month, in May. May 31st, we take over. We just buy the property. And we clean everything inside it. We throw all of the the drugs stuff. We throw it in the trash. We clean inside it. We clean all of the cooler. We, we make a new uh, the ceramic new ceramic at the floor, and we change everything. I have cameras uh, outside, everywhere in each corner, uh, reach all of the street, and uh, I have the the inspector. She coming in and she check all of the camera and she say everything is fine. Uh, we don't keep nobody outside. We have sign outside. No law, uh, no running. Nobody can stay outside. We did everything uh, to keep the neighborhood is nice and clean. So, the conditions that are 
in this memo from the zoning inspector that you're in violation of. There are approximately five conditions here. Are you, do you understand that the conditions that we place on this permit, you have to follow those conditions? Do you understand that? Yes, just I don't know about the, uh, the hearing today. She just came in today to tell uh, she told me just uh, you have hearing. The hearing for the old owner is not for me, and I don't know about it. That's why I come today to see what's going on. Okay. I, need, I need to speak with you guys, see what, what I have to do. And, and if you're ever unclear about any of these conditions, you can certainly get in contact with the zoning inspector, and I'm sure she would be glad to walk you through any of the problems that you have and explain them to you. Very wonderful lady to help you get where you need to be, but you need to follow the conditions, right? Yes. Okay. Are you willing to follow all the conditions? Yes. Any questions for the conditional use permit holder from the board? Yes, Mr. Drama, thank you very much. Uh, is it Drama? Drama. Thank you very much. I certainly appreciate uh, your willingness to do business in the city of St. Louis. Just uh, 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 one question. Do you have any, any business or personal relationship with the previous owner? With an old owner? Yes. Uh, no. That's any all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions for the conditional use permit holder? If um, we give you another 30 days to come in compliance with your conditions here, are you going to um, do that? Are you willing to get with the um, inspector and go over what you need to do and come in compliance? Yes. And the inspector, she's coming today, and uh, she's walking inside the, uh, the store. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't look at the camera. She doesn't look at anything. She's in the phone, screaming with somebody. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I got this everything recorded on my camera, too. So. And uh, she walk outside. She said, you have a meeting today. That's what, what she told me. Okay. All right. Any further questions from the board? A point of clarity. You were just made aware today of the violations that exist? Yes. You didn't know prior to today? No. And, and when was the last inspection of the facility? Mm. We can call the zoning inspector back up. Let's, can we do let's, that? Let's finish with uh, okay. the conditional use permit holder, then we'll call the zoning inspector back. Okay. Any further questions for the conditional use permit holder? Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, the zoning administrator's inspector to come forward, please. Another gentleman that wanted to speak. We'll go back to him. Can you can you please tell us when you performed your most recent inspections prior to today, and how the conditional use permit holder would have been notified of these violations? First and foremost, let me say this. When we were here in March for the hearing, I was trying to get the board to understand that they were talking about getting a new owner. We needed to do something to sever ties with the old owner in order for us not to be here with this. Now, the last time that I actually, because I only have to do an inspection when I have to go out for my revocation hearing. So my last inspection was March 20th when we had our hearing. Now, the letter that goes to the owner letting them know of the hearing for revocation comes from the Board of Public Safety, I'm sorry, Board of Public Service Secretary. It doesn't come from me. Right. Now, I think what the dilemma is is the fact that we have somebody that was previously an owner. We have somebody that has come in here and said that he acquired this business on May 31st, does not have a occupancy permit because he can't get one because we already have one that's open. Uh, but I think that's the problem. Now, I have a problem because this gentleman just stood here, and I'm going to let this board know. First of all, he lied to me this morning because when I went into the business to see who actually 
was there and I asked him personally, are you the owner? He told me no. In fact, he gave me somebody's name and I got it right here. See, I, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just there with these people coming in here with this. This is the piece of paper he gave me with a phone number for somebody named Mike Jabbar, who is supposed to be the owner. And for him to come in here and say about my behavior and what I'm doing is unacceptable to me. Right. Because when I asked you a question as a city authority, I'm looking for the truth of the matter. He wrote it down on the paper and had that to me this morning. Right. Okay? Now, all the other stuff that he's saying and whatever, I'm so past it. But he does not have an occupancy permit. He should not be operating at this time because even though he bought a business, he doesn't have an occupancy to run the business. Now, I've done nothing wrong to this gentleman but try to find out who is the new owner so that I can have accurate information to handle what I need to handle. But the actual letter comes from the secretary for the Board of Public Service. Right. So to be fair, the inspection that you did today would have been the first time that you spoke with this gentleman? Correct. Okay. So in, in all fairness, it is correct that he heard today and there is some confusion with the previous owner, the new owner, occupancy permits, the conditional use permit. So we have a series of issues here yes. that we need to get clarified. Yes, we And do. we also need to clarify who the actual owner of the establishment is. That is correct, sir. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Questions from the board? Okay. I, yeah. So every, every public notice or letter has not been, has been to the previous owner? We, is that true? Let me I'm, say this. I'm trying to go through it as I'm, so I didn't have to answer. Let me say question. this. Up until today, when I walked in that business, I had no idea of who was the new owner, per se, sir. And when I asked the question, I was given that name and that number that's on that paper. And then he comes in here, and he attacks me, which I don't have a problem with. But he lied to me because now he's standing here telling the board he's the owner. So now... I don't. I still don't know as the inspector who the actual owner is. Okay. Items that we need to clarify. Okay. No, Mr. Wilson, I'm sorry. May I? I, I? I'm looking at the certified mail that went out, and I can say that Jamal Al Curie was sent the notice of the. But that would today. be probably the previous. Yeah, owner. I mean, I can tell you. That. So we had no new information at all until I walked in there today. Well, uh, Mr. President, yes, sir. perhaps we can. Um, get some clarification from the auto woman. She's been negotiating and having conversations with uh, people. She was here in March and, and talked to the then owner. And I understand uh, from her previous testimony that she talked to the new owner. And so uh, if you would, would you be kind enough to clarify who you have been you. dealing with? Thank you, Judge. Uh, yes, so I did speak to the previous owner. Um, or excuse me, I haven't really spoken to the previous owner very much, but I did I have spoken with the new owner. Their representative is also here, Mr. Deering, uh, who was aware and has been aware since the March hearing that this board is considering revocation of their conditional use for reasons of violations. So the new owners have been aware from the very beginning from my direct communication as well as communication from their representative. Do you know their names? We have a Michael Jabbar. That sounds familiar. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't have their exact names uh, at the top of my brain right now, but um, it does sound familiar. Uh, perhaps Mr. Deering could speak to that. But I will say that the new owners have been aware of the ongoing issues there, which is why when they expressed to me that they were going to be demolishing the building, this was met with my support, uh, both before you and before the community and to them. All right, let me just, for, for, for clarification, so it, it's... Uh, uh, of course, uh, the uh, witness uh, was under oath, and the question was asked whether he was the owner, and he indicated yes, um, which triggered a, a, a response from Ms. Turner. Uh, is the person that's in the hearing room today uh, the owner of the business, or is he just simply a representative of the owner of the business? To my understanding, there are two, two owners here that we're speaking of. The owner of the building 
and the owner of the business. Um, I have n I, the, the, the representative is the gentleman who's not come before the board at this point. That is the person who is, my understanding is their agent and representative. The other gentleman here in the room that came and testified is not someone whom I've met before. Uh, so whether he's the owner of the business, I cannot stay. I spoke with the owner of the building who had plans to cease operating the business. So I never had any contact with any prospective business operator. Right, understanding so you, you are not familiar with the tenant. You are familiar with the owner of that's the right. business. And it was my understanding that when the new owner of the building took hold, there would be no tenant until further repairs were made. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Further questions? Anybody? Thank you. I, I just want to reiterate, I have the utmost respect for the board, and my your decision uh, should be made, you know, uh, I, I'm just here to offer what perspective I can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. At this time, if there's anyone present opposing this revocation that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. I do. James Deering. Please proceed. So I'm James Deering. I'm the broker owner of Resource, a licensed real estate firm. Uh, I am the representative of the new owners of the building. Um, the, uh, we have been working on this and with uh, Kara's um, support with the continuance to give us an opportunity to um, uh, get into the building and to do our plans for it. Um, I have documentation that I pulled with regards to first with the ownership and to clarify that. So uh, we had the property under contract with the previous owners who were very difficult to work with, had a lot of problems with regards to the Department of Revenue, to Department of Natural Resources with the city and all of that, uh, the title work and untangling that took uh, over six weeks, which is uh, uh, very uncommon. Uh, the uh, property was purchased for a total of $215,000, which is way above what real market value would be. That uh, amount, though, also includes the property at 3145 Chippewa, which is a boarded up uh, residential building and the plans are to demolish that uh, for the construction of the new facility. The owner is Southside Property, LLC, and uh, I have both a closing statement. I didn't bring an extra copy for you, but it has the information. But I printed off this morning a copy from the uh, assessor's site that shows the ownership and that's registered in uh, Kings Highway. And we did have a meeting with Alderman uh, Spencer there with Mike Jabbar. That's his nickname. He is actually Munji Adol Jabbar. Uh, Mike owns the Gas Mart stations and C stores. Uh, there are 30 plus of those in the area. Uh, the most recent examples of renovations of these properties are the facility that uh, uh, he operated, which is the BP at Kings Highway and Manchester. I helped him also acquire the auto repair place at uh, next door, and he has changed that into a car wash. Also, they have uh, completed the renovations and have another building still to do at uh, Broadway and Russell, also a BP. Um, these stations have been all uh, renovated, and that was our plans. I'm not sure why Alderman Spencer stepped out, because there are some clarifications that I'd like to make and make sure that um, she understood what our intention is. Also, in, in a point of clarification with the ownership, Southside Property LLC and Mike Jabbar 
bought and owned the property. They have an agreement, which I'm not privy to the details of the same, with uh, Jassan to operate and own the business. It was always their intention to, in the interim, operate this business. And I can speak with Jassan, uh, for Jassan as well as um, for the owners of Gas Mart, that uh, they will do everything in compliance with what needs to be done. There's not going to be a lot of improvements because the building will be demolished. The gas tanks are uh, out of code and impossible to put gas back in it without digging up those tanks, doing the uh, credits for the cleanup and that, and that is part of the plans. Um, she was told at that meeting that those uh, diagrams, the architectural renderings, the plans, the demolition permit would be applied for for the other building and new construction would be at that facility and the timetable was about a year. Now all these things, if you all have development expertise, all these things take time to develop a plan to get that so in the interim and to have uh, Jassan still involved, they had planned to continue operations so there's a stream of revenue there and they wanted to also prove to the neighbors that they were able to operate uh, in a good fashion that was acceptable to the neighbors and to the community. Um, just also as a uh, clarification, uh, we talked about and city councilor asked about the uh, conditional use permit holder. Actually, Jason and Southside Property are not. That is the previous owner. So what um, they have already gone and applied for new occupancy. And uh, that is waiting on notice for the inspections. Um, and so I also want to make it clear that uh, they did not purchase the business. And being a real estate agent and broker, I helped them purchase the property. Uh, that, bu that business and the tanks and what had gone on before, there was way too much liability and no value in that. It was the understanding that the contents would be left, but I think Jason has thrown out uh, uh, a good portion of that, which is not acceptable. Uh, we offered to meet there uh, uh, right afterward, and uh, Kara wasn't able to make the meeting, but Jasan was there, as was I, as was uh, Mr. Jabbar. And uh, I've spoken with Barb Potts. I live in Dutchtown neighborhood. I'm actually in the 25th ward, uh, but um, I've known Barb for 20 plus years, and um, I think Barb could have, should have, would have been here to testify of the improvements that were made. Now, keeping in mind that uh, the closing just happened on May 31st, so uh, the operator has had less than a month to comply this out. He didn't receive the notice of the hearing. He doesn't have a copy of the violations, which I've made some notes on, but I'm sure when those are received in writing, he will get that done. The building's already been painted, it's been cleaned up, it's been thinned out, the signage has been taken off, um, adding two trash cans and the signs, even the way that the neighborhood want them read. If we have that language, I'm sure he would put uh, those things up. Uh, we got no problem with a 30-day continuance. I don't understand fully the, the terms in the city ordinance regarding revocation but uh, continuing on a probationary period uh, would, would suit that, uh, them just fine. Uh, Kara mentioned the uh, calls for service. Uh, I haven't uh, gotten any record of that, not that I would receive it, but uh, there's been no notices that have been uh, posted, filed, no correspondence, and as I said, uh, the change of ownership has been there since um, uh, May 31st, so there has been time for him to receive uh, notices. So just a little bit of clarification here. So where the problem lies is that we had a previous owner who got himself 
into a revocation situation, and then the facility was purchased during that process. If the previous owner would have closed their doors and went out of business, the conditional use permit would have went away, and then the new owner could applied for a new one. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is because it never closed the doors, it is a continuation of the existing con um, conditional use permit, all right? Okay. And so th the previous owner had a set of conditions to comply with, and I think we all understand the fact that you propose to build a new building, and that's wonderful, and we all understand construction that it takes time. The problem is, is in the short period, which is between now and when the door is open to the new business, is that the person who's operating the business comply with the requirements on a conditional use permit. They are, as the judge mentioned, they are relatively um, basic to comply with. It's some signage, some trash receptacles, some very basic things that he needs to comply with. Um, and then also to get in order the occupancy permit to run the business. And all that happens prior to um, this new building opening its doors. And, you know, I, I don't think anybody here has an issue with the fact. We understand there's a lot of moving parts, but I think at the end of the day, we need to get assurance of that in the interim period. When you open a new business, obviously there's going to be a lot of things that happen there, but in the interim period that we don't disrespect the conditions of the conditional use, that we follow the occupancy, that we follow all the letter of the law for operating a business in the city. Okay? That's Questions fine. That's not going to be any of my business ongoing. I'm uh, very active in the community and have the contacts, and part of my agreement in facilitating this and earning my commission and the brokerage was to help be a liaison with the city and having known the alderman and the nso and uh, put a call in for lisa otke a commercial district manager to um, see that uh, it does in fact go well i would i would say if you have a list of those uh, items uh, even today uh, i think jason would continue to get that done and uh, welcome myra to come back and make amends but also to uh, uh, see the compliance and I think there has been progress made I have been there since but um, I think uh, our uh, Jason needs a checklist too to make sure that that's completed and uh, will assure you that that's done other questions from the board um, yes just for clarification thank you very much sir I certainly appreciate you being here mm -hmm. um, mr. steering uh -huh. um, who are the uh, partners in the limited liability uh, company or corporation that you represent? It is uh, Munji Abdel Jabber, who is also known as Mike Jabbar, and I believe his brother Adam is also a partner. Hold on, I have a closing statement from that. Yeah, and so it's also uh, Adam uh, Abdel Jabber. And who, did they, to, who did they yeah. purchase from, please? Uh, it's there on the closing statement. Um, I've never actually met the man, but I've talked to him. Uh, the nickname is Sal or Salah. And that's also on the closing statement as to who the seller is. There was a separate seller for the property uh, on Compton, or excuse me, on Chippewa, which is the building to be demolished. So you believe that the seller is Jamal Al-Khuri, A-L-K-U-R-W-I? You believe that to be the seller? of the building to your client, which is uh, Southside Properties LLC, is that correct? Correct. I was actually at the title company at the closing, so I did meet them and the other couple that owned uh, uh, the uh, Chippewa property. Yeah, I, I noticed that you were very careful to, to distance yourself and your 
your clients away from the underground gas tanks and other things on the property. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm a little confused. How do you buy the property and you don't buy the liability? No, you do. And that had to be cleared up. And there were fines by the Department of Natural Resources, which was one of the things with a signed agreement that that would be paid. And then again, with the, you know, with my client's experience in, um, uh, the gas stations and sea stores and tank removal and new tanks coming in, um, they were, they're taking on that liability. But um, you believe that, um, is it Jason, I believe you refer to him as the tenant operator, I think for clarification, not the owner operator, but the tenant operator would not be engaged in the sale of gas. And this would just be what, a, a, a convenience store? Well, it it can't, the existing gas tanks are not safe or they're not compliant. So they would have to be uh, dug up, removed, and new tanks put in. And uh, I, I can't speak for Jason's plans or for um, Southside Properties' plans on, on the timetable if they had planned to do that. Uh, prior to the construction of the new station. I doubt it because the new station would be configured differently and there would be new uh, new tanks, more more gas pumps, and an entire different layout. And that would be, that would be done during the new construction. Thank you, Mr. President. Other questions from the board? Thank you very much. All right, thank you. If there's anyone else present opposing this revocation that wishes to testify, please come forward and be sworn in. Seeing none, I'd like to introduce two items into evidence, please. I'd like to introduce the zoning inspector's report as item A, and I would like to introduce the item provided by the building owner concerning ownership as item B in the evidence. This matter concerning hearing number 8215 is now closed and submitted. The board will proceed with its regular agenda. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Here. Director Wilson. Here. Director Hayes is excused. Director Augustine is excused. Director Moore. Here. Director Edwards. Here. And President Bradley. Here we have a quorum. I'll call the meeting order. Board order number 798. Whereas the Charter of the City of St. Louis grants the Board of Public Service a number of duties and responsibilities, including regulation, investigation, and approval of a variety of important city transactions. And whereas Melba Moore was appointed by the, by, by the Mayor Francis Slay as the Acting Director of Health and Hospitals April 3rd, 2015. And whereas since her appointment, Director Moore's first meeting took place April 7, 2015. And whereas Director Moore was a dedicated member of the Board of Public Service, attending 114 Board, Board of Public Service meetings. And whereas during her tenure, Director Moore participated in a total of 50 hearings for conditional uses, massage establishments, tattoo establishments, tree appeals, and rooming houses, etc. And whereas, Director Moore has participated in the approval of 3,388 permits within the City of St. Louis and 102 board lettings. And whereas, she has voted on street and alley improvements and vacations, street banners, bed and breakfast establishments, dedications, dormitories, festivals, fire display, handicap ramps, hotels, <laughs> open air markets, park construction, sidewalk cafes, landmarks, etc. And whereas she has participated in an approval of permits for AT&T Missouri, <laughs> Metropolitan Sewer District, Charter Communications, Southwestern Bell, and Ameren. And whereas she was a member of the Board of Public Service, along with the directors, with Director Scobie, Wilson, Hayes, Augustine, Edwards, and President Bradley. And whereas Director Moore officially will retire from the service with the City of St. Louis on June 26, 2018. And whereas the Board of Public Service will greatly miss her presence, 
dedication, wisdom, and expertise. Now, therefore, it is hereby ordered by the Honorable Board of Public Service that Melba Moore be recognized for her years of guidance and directions to the business of the board, board and that a copy of the board order become a permanent record of the public body. By order of the Board of Public Service, June 26, 2018. So on behalf of the Board of Public Service, I would like to congratulate you on a job well done. Thank you for your service. And wish you very well on your next assignment. Thank you. Thank you. Speech. <laughs> Mr. President and members of the board, I just want to say thank you. It has been truly an honor to serve the citizens of the city of St. Louis, but more importantly, to work alongside of you. Every time I think about what we do, we do it together. And that's how you make things happen, and that's how you change this city. So I'm proud to say that I serve with you as you change this city for the better for the citizens of St. Louis. Thank you all very much. From the president. Cry. Yeah. From the president, a permit from Fred Weber, Inc. to utilize eight acres of land, no building, at 3535 Goodfellow. PSA number 1214, replacement of miscellaneous HVAC equipment for Terminal 1, Climate Control Package 2 at St. Louis Lambert International Airport. Supplemental agreement number 19 to PSA number 1138, Electrical, Mechanical, and Plumbing Design Services, Lambert St. Louis International Airport. Supplemental ag agreement 1 to PSA number 1174, Design Services for Video Camera Surveillance Systems. Supplemental agreement number 1 to PSA number 1204, Tower Grove Park Neighborhood Assess en Enhancements. Request for Renaissance Development Associates and NDS Management Company for a site access to 2106 through 14 Washington, 2128 through 30 Washington, and 2135 Washington to perform environmental testing and other due diligence regarding purchase of vacant city property for development. Recommends approval. From the Director of Public Utility. Recommendation that the board declares as an emergency to perform necessary work to install electrical service for temporary office trailers be approved. From the Director of Public Utilities and, and Streets, joint recommendation that the following permits for AT&T be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. To access manhole at 4054 South Broadway, board 25 feet east, then 318 feet north, then 150 feet east, and finally south to the rear of 4040 South Broadway. To access handhold at the front of 5900 Columbia and bore 174 feet to new 3 by 5 by 3 feet handhold at the same address. From new handhold at 5900 Columbia, trench 15 feet to new 4 by 4 pad with fiber box. Also from new handhold, bore to multiple riser poles, and four new three by five by three feet handholds. Direct bury 244 feet of copper cable from manhole at the intersection of North 25th Street and Salisbury, boring trench 144 feet south and east right away of 25th Street. Bore will then turn east 23 feet to, to utility pole at the rear of 2333 Mallinckrodt. Starting from Manhole, near 1425 Hampton, board 390 feet to easement at the rear of 1425 Hampton, a new 3x5x3 three three feet handhold will be placed in the easement. From Handhole, board two fibers, board two fibers 18 feet in right of way to new 13x19x12 by by inch handhole at 1401 Hampton. From Handhole, board to multiple riser pole locations. 
starting from Manhole near 2158 McCausland, bore 750 feet to new 3 by 5 by 3 feet handhole at 2211 Forest. From new handhole, dig 6 feet to new 4 by 4 pad with fiber box. Also from new handhole, bore to multiple riser pole locations. Starting from manhole near 4001 McCree to bore 1,240 feet to new 3 by 5 by 3 feet handhole at 4101 Blaine. From new handhole, dig 6 feet to new 4 by 4 pad with fiber box. Also from new handhole, bore to rise a pole at same address. From manhole near 6070 Cates, bore 1,960 feet to new 3 by 5 by 3 feet handhold at 5,900 Clemens. From handhold at 5,900 Clemens, dig 6 feet to new 4 by 4 pad with fiber box, etc. From manhole near 6660 Hancock, bore 2,215 feet to new 3 by 5 by 3 feet handhold at 7001 Marquette. From handhold at 7003 Marquette, Dig six feet to new four by four pad with fiber box, etc. From manhole near 4526 Lexington, bore 684 feet to new three by five by three feet handhole at 3501 North Taylor. From handhole at 3501 North Taylor, dig one feet to a new four by three feet pad with fiber box, etc. Joint recommendation that the following permits for Bluebird Network be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Bore in place one two inch conduit and handholds for new fiber starting at a new handhold at 6322 Oakland. Place south for 530 feet. At this point, place new handhold at 1104 TAM and continue south for 475 feet, etc. Bore and place one two-inch conduit and handholds for new fiber starting at 1401 McCausland. Place new handhold and continue placing west for 470 feet. At this point, 7105 Dale, leave St. Louis right away. Recommend, joint recommendation that permit for Union Electric Company doing business in Amory, Missouri to set a pole in the alley behind 6170 Delmore. Pole is needed for new transformer for a new business. Recommends approval subject to certain conditions. From the Director of Public Utilities and Public Safety, joint recommendation that the following lot consolidations, land consolidations be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Mary Johnson, 5834, 5838, and 5844 Romaine, and City Block 3822 South. Bonds Hospital and Quadrant Management Company at 4901 through 05 and 4917 Forest Park, and 3 through 17 South Euclid, and City Block 3885. And Botanical Heights Homes, LLC, at 4104 and 4106 Tony and City Block 5310. Joint recommendation that permit for Florence Work Group to subdivide land at 5201 Filer and City Block 4741 be approved, subject to certain conditions. From the Director of Streets, recommendation that permit for Four Strings LLC to encroach with Sidewalk Cafe of four tables and ten chairs utilizing 144 square feet with liquor at 1730 South A Street be approved subject to certain conditions. From the Director of Parks, Recreation, and Forestry, recommendation that that the that a 56 a uh, 56,000 Bobcat toolcat, a piece of equipment purchased and donated from the Forest Park Forever to the City of St. Louis Forestry <coughs> Division be approved. From the Director of Public Safety, recommendation that two festival zones be approved subject to certain conditions as follows. Pulitzer Family Day Block Party, July 14, 2018, at Washington Boulevard between North Spring, parcel number 3713, and Pulitzer Grass Lot, parcel 3713. And GMP Street Party, July 28, 2018, G at its Grace and Peace Fellowship at Clara between Delmore and, and Cul-de-Sac. Now we have the conditional uses.
Good afternoon, Mr. President and members of the board. My name is Terrell Island, Zoning Plan Examiner, representing the Building Commissioner. Improved Board Order Number 766, transmit here with the recommendations for the following conditional use applications. Approval with conditions is recommended for five applications, <coughs> and they are 5472 Thrush, 1417 Gano, 3539 Grace, 6116 Dr. Martin Luther King, and 5327 Claxton. I request that these recommendations be approved as submitted. Are there any questions or comments about these, these applications? Any questions from the board on the conditional uses? Seeing none, take a motion, please. I move to approve the uh, conditional uses as per um, presented. Second. Move to second for approval. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie? Aye. Director Wilson? Aye. Director Hayes is excused. Director Augustine is excused. Director Moore? Aye. Director Edwards? Aye. And President Bradley? Aye. Conditional uses are approved. Hearing number 8196, it was a revisit of a revocation permit. Here, a conditional use permit at uh, 5400 Partridge for a convenience store and a carryout restaurant with no liquor and no outside cooking. The conditional use permit holder did not appear for today's hearing, so I will open the floor up for discussion. This is, is this the one that's been going on for over a year? Yes, sir. Yeah. I had one concern that came up. Um, the owner, according to the Secretary of State, is Ammer and Sam LLC, and their registered agent is Ammer Diab D I A B, and he's got a listed address in Creveport. Uh, and it looks as if, when I go through the entire <laughs> file, at one point he was notified. And this is so old, but it, I don't know that he received a notice of this hearing. So do you have an idea that maybe it went to a wrong address yes. or the person was not notified? Yes. Okay. Legitimate concern? It's a concern. Any further comments? Mr. Mr. President, in, in light of that, I will make a motion that uh, the hearing be held open uh, for at least 30 days to give an opportunity uh, for notice to be given to the last known address of the um, registered agent for the Limited Liability Corporation for 5400 Portridge. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes is excused. Director Augustine is excused. Director Moore. Aye. Director Edwards. Aye. And President Bradley. Aye. Approved. Hearing number 8215 was a revisit of a revocation hearing uh, for 3750 South Compton uh, gas station and convenience store. We heard from the zoning inspector as well as uh, Alder Woman Kara Spencer concerning um, what the proposed plans are. We also heard from a gentleman from the operation of the business side as well as the owner and um, the recommendation or the ask of the alderman is that we consider allowing this individual as a new business owner who's taken over an existing conditional use permit to be allowed uh, a period of time to resolve the issues that are at hand. The one issue that I think we need to be concerned with uh, beyond meeting the conditional use uh, items are the occupancy permit, which needs to be um, applied for and needs to be obtained immediately to operate a business. So I'll open the floor for discussion. Mr. President, is it possible, because my concern is the assurance that you won't be back here again, is it possible to unbundle so you revoke the current permit and then the new person who comes in has an opportunity to demonstrate their willingness to comply. So the condition that goes along with that, and the city councilor can um, explain it better than me probably, but when you revoke a conditional use permit, what the ruling is, 
is that another business that is exactly similar cannot operate on, at that address for one year period. Yeah. So that's why I explained that they okay. were caught in between a revocation process. It would have been much easier if the previous owner would have closed doors and surrendered the conditional use permit, and then the new owner could have reapplied. So in this case here, it's a uh, assuming of, so the only way we can really proceed with it is, is as we are doing. Is that correct, Counselor? Yes, it is. In um, 26.100.030 that's cited in this revocation, um, a permit couldn't be issued for that conditional use for a period of one year if this were about to Any further discussion? I'd like to make a motion that we get written conditions to the new business operator and revisit this in 30 days, and I could be convinced of 60 if you think that helps for the occupancy permit. So do we want to do 30 or do we want to do 60? Yeah, the question. So I second it for 30. Well, uh, we're talking a little bit about how quickly uh, uh, will they be able to get an occupancy permit. And I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned with respect to the ownership, the reason I was asking those questions in terms of the limited liability corporation, who was there, and things of that sort. Uh, so the application for the occupancy permit, I'm sus I suspect, could, could be granted very quickly, but I'm not sure whether the ownership uh, 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 met uh, uh, metrics is, is, is exactly as they said. What would you recommend? I would recommend the 60-day period to give them a little bit more time to... Director, would you withdraw your motion? I would. Okay. So would you have to revise your motion? Yeah, I move that we get written con conditions of the, of the violations to the new business operator and that we revisit this in 60 days. Second. Moved and seconded. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes is excused. Director Augustine is excused. Director Moore. Aye. Director Edwards. Aye. And President Bradley. Aye. Approved. I'd like to turn your attention to our meeting minutes from last Tuesday, June 19th, 2018. Are there any questions or comments on the minutes as presented? Seeing now, I'll take a motion, please. I move to accept the minutes. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes is excused. Director Augustine is excused. Director Moore. Director Moore. Aye. Director Edwards. Aye. And President Bradley. Aye. Amendments are approved. Today's agenda. Questions or comments on the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Second. Moved and seconded for approval of the agenda. Can you call the roll, please? Director Scobie. Aye. Director Wilson. Aye. Director Hayes is excused. Director Augustine is excused. Director Moore. Aye. Director Edwards. Aye. And President Bradley. Aye. Today's agenda is approved. Motion for adjournment, please. I move for this meeting to be adjourned. Mm -hmm. Second. Move and second. We're not going to second. We had planned not to second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>